of Keller Williams Plus. Look forward to seeing you at our team meeting. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today on the little things by Andy Andrews. And there's the conversation I want to have with you, and the conversation is on quitting. Cool. Christine, thank you. And good luck on that showing to you and Desiree. You're going to crush it. I know you will. So let's talk about this little thing called quitting. And, and first of all, quitting is more than deciding to quit a job it, it, or deciding to quit on a relationship, right? Uh, quitting is deciding to stop at 19 calls, 19 conversations versus having the 20th conversation. It could be something as small as that. And little things make a difference. You know that book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff? Well, if you have a copy of that, go home and throw it away. Because you should absolutely sweat the small stuff. It's all the, all the small stuff added up together that make the big stuff, right? And besides, it's the small stuff that'll get you. Here, I'll prove it. Hervé, ever been bitten by an elephant? No, of course not. How about a mosquito? All the time. See, it's the small stuff that'll get you. All right. Everything you do matters. Everything you don't do matters just as much. Every little thing you do or don't do steers life onto a slightly different course. You want to be more successful. You want to be more successful in your personal life and your professional life. There's a principle that you need to live by. And that principle is go the extra mile. Go the extra mile on everything you do. You know, a great example of someone who, who um, went the extra mile is my buddy Perry. And it's interesting because I'm putting this jacket on today and I feel something in my pocket and I reach into my pocket and it's Perry's eulogy that I read at his celebration of life, right? And I wasn't even planning on talking about him this morning, but it made me think of Perry and this conversation makes me think of Perry. And I'm gonna give you one example of going the extra mile for Perry. And he did this, he did this kind of stuff every day. And you've heard this, so get ready to hear it again. Uh, I'm driving home in 2016 uh, with Lacey in the car. She's still in treatment. She was in treatment for cancer at the time. She was not feeling well. Uh, she had just had chemo two days before, and she is feeling really, really crappy. She's 14 years old, right? And I'm driving over the Skyway Bridge heading from... Palm Harbor back to Coral Springs and the check engine light comes on. Great. I pull over 75 and 275. And my first thought was, okay, I got to get this car to, um, it's a Sunday, by the way, everything's closed. I got to get this car to <clears throat> the dealer in order for them to do work on it. Um, there was clearly something wrong because when I lifted the hood, steam everywhere, water everywhere. This car was not going anywhere. And I call my buddy Perry. And all I, and the only reason I called him was because he lived close by and he would know the area. And I asked him one question, where do you, Perry, do you know where the closest Lexus dealership is? Right? He says, yeah, I do. Matter of fact, here's the address. Uh, and here's, here's a company that will tow your car. I know the guy that owns the company. Give him a call. And I'll meet you at the Lexus dealership. I'm like, all right, that's cool. So, so far, I mean, he's already gone the extra mile. Yes or yes? yes. And I show up at the <laughs> Lexus dealership. And Perry's there in his brand new car. And a friend of his is following him in another car. I'm like, well, what's going on? He goes, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to leave your car here. Give me the keys. I'll call the Lexus dealership tomorrow. I'll get your car in to get fixed. You're going to take my car home with Lacey. And my friend is going to give me a ride home. 
And when your car is finished, I'll pick it up from the Lexus dealership and I'll drive it down the Coral Springs for you. Wow. Who does that stuff? Wow. Who does things like that? But see, you know, you're saying a friend, and here's the thing I know about Perry, he'd do that for anybody. Yep. And it's just who he was. And it's how he lived his life. He went the extra mile in everything he did. That's why when we had a celebration of life for Perry Campbell, there were hundreds of people there celebrating this amazing man's life because every single person there had experienced Perry Campbell going the extra mile. Now, what if you did that in your marriage? What if you did that in your family, in your business? Uh, it, in, I mean this, and I hope I don't offend anybody. You want to go the extra mile as a real estate agent in South Florida? It's not that hard to do. Answer your phone. You're going the extra mile. Return phone calls. You're going the extra mile. Show up for an appointment when you say you're going to be there on time. <laughs> you're going the extra mile. Man, I wish I was selling real estate here. I really do. I want to get back into production, guys, starting next week. <laughs> Looking for a new team leader in Coral Springs. Kidding. All right. Page 51. Well, I mean, here's my point, guys. If you're a real estate agent who decides, okay, I am going to deliver service that's unheard of in my market. I am going to be the exception to the rule. I am going to deliver service that doesn't meet expectations. It exceeds expectations. Not some of the time, but all of the time. Are you going to be an in-demand real estate agent? Say yes. yes. Yeah. Are other real estate agents going to want to do deals with you? Say yes. yes. In other words, pretty competitive business, right? And it's not hard to beat the competition, guys. The competition kind of sucks. Sorry, well, I'm on Facebook. See how many Facebook friends I lose because of that. Oh, well, there's a bunch in the ad list. I'll just add them. All right, page 51. As little a thing as quitting can seem in the moment, it moves you in a direction and creates a mindset that you can begin to see as normal. In other words, quitting can become a habit. Settling can become a habit. And, and you've heard me say this before, what could you do if you had to? The answer is anything. If you and I are in a boat, John, and we're fishing three miles offshore and the boat sinks, swimming 2.8 miles ain't gonna get it. We're still dead. You have to swim three miles. It's not a choice. Now, Work your business like that. What could you do if you had to and you never settled? You had standards that you held yourself accountable to and you always hit your standards. So he's telling a story about a story and he goes on to say, I nodded as he added and quitting is normal for some people. It's always easier to quit than continue and push through the challenge. Quitting is easy. Settling is easy. Going the extra mile is hard. Who gets to decide what's impossible? If you run up against a situation that declares there is no way then all you have to do is hang in there until you find a way. You have to find a way where there is no way. Find a way where there is no way. Sometimes success is just a matter of not stopping until you've achieved your goal. Success is simple. Don't stop until you achieved your goal. Don't go home today until you've scheduled an appointment. Don't go home today. Don't stop making calls today until you've added somebody to your database. 
follow up forever, regardless of the rejection that you get, because you reject rejection because no is not a word that lives in your vocabulary. No simply means not yet. You understand the concept that people will never change their mind, but they will make a new decision based on new information. By the way, they'll only make a new decision based on new information when you don't quit. You know, you got this as little kids. You did. You were persistent as heck. You didn't take no for an answer. Can I have ice cream? No. Please? No. Now, how many five-year-olds go, okay, I'm good. No ice cream. Life is good, mom. Thanks. No, they don't do that. They keep asking. And then as you get older, you start giving up. You start accepting no. Can I see your home? I noticed that your listing came off the market. I'd love to talk to you about what I could do to help you get it sold. Go away. Okay, I'll go away. You take no for an answer. A five-year-old wouldn't do that. A five-year-old would say, why? Why can't I see it? Well, because, because, because why? Just be a five-year-old. Lead generate like a five-year-old. How's that? Oh. All right. One day I'm promising that you will experience a success that happens because of the gift you developed in the autumn of your sixth grade year. And you'll be the only one who knows the truth about the advantage you had by not developing the habit of quitting. So what Andy is talking about here is he's talking about one year in the sixth grade, he played football and Andy Andrews is a football fan and he loves football. He would tell you that it doesn't matter who's playing, the, go the Gophers playing the Iguanas <laughs> and he's going to turn on the TV and watch the game. Can you imagine a football team named the Iguanas? I mean, that's something Miami would do probably, right? And, uh, <laughs> and he played one year and he hated it. He absolutely hated it. And he's a little guy and he's getting his butt kicked and he wanted to quit. He went to his father and he said, I want to quit. And his, mo his mother even said, look at him. He's small. He's getting beat up by the other kids. He's coming home with headaches. He doesn't like this. Let him quit. And his father said, no, I'm not going to let you quit. You don't have to play next year, but you have to finish this year. Because I'm telling you, quitting is a habit, son, and I will not to let you. I will not let you develop the habit of quitting. He goes on to say that in his house, if he signed up to sell Christmas cards door to door, walking selling Christmas cards, he was going to sell every single box of cards. Even if he was out knocking on doors in May, he still going to keep going until he sold every single box because in his, his house, quitting wasn't allowed. You want to teach your children something that will pay them back in spades for the rest of their life? Pay them to teach them to never quit. Never quit. You start a job, you finish it. You sign up to be a part of a team, you play. Whether you like it or not, whether the coach is a jerk or not, whether you get playing time or not, you don't quit. He goes on to tell about the story of getting the Traveler's Gift published and the fact that it was turned down by publisher after publisher after publisher. Nobody would publish this book. Now, if you've read The Traveler's Gift, I mean, it's probably hard to imagine that the publishers were saying, we don't get it. This book doesn't make sense. We don't know. You know, his friends would read the manuscript and tell him, this Chibba's book changed my life. And publisher after publisher would say, no thanks. And he goes on at the bottom of the page, he's talking about the, the, the traveler's gift. And he says, the manuscript was a story about a man whose family was experiencing the toughest of times. Now, I've shared with you that I've read that book over 40 times. 
I first read it 20 years ago. Now, the reason I've read that book over 40 times is because every time I find myself in one of those times where I'm experiencing the toughest of times, that book comes off the shelf. So the fact that I've read it over 40 times should tell you there's been a lot of rough waters in the last 20 years. <laughs> I'm grateful for that, by the way. This man, David Ponder, was able to travel back in time to seven different locations. In those places, he met with seven historical figures who at that moment were experiencing the worst time in their own lives. Each of the seven people gave the man a written principle and he, be, and he came to understand that if he made the principle a part of his own life, everything about his future would change. At the bottom of the page, he shares probably the most powerful principle of that book that he learns in his seventh destination, which is the warehouse in heaven, uh, where he visits with the archangel Gabriel. And that principle is, I will persist without exception. So today's conversation was on quitting. And we're going to wrap up the conversation with, I will persist without exception. First of all, let me break that down for you. A simple sentence, right? First of all, I, I will. Not someone else. I'm not leveraging this to somebody else. If we're talking about lead generation, I will persist. It's up to me. I will persist. Now, here's the other part I want to break down for you. Persist. Persist means to, to, to continue. If I go on a five-mile walk, I'm going to persist until I get home five miles. I'm not stopping at 4.8 miles. Close enough. Let me knock on the closest door and see if they'll let me in. I'm, doing, I'm going to persist until I get home. Simple. Here's the thing, guys. Everybody persists. Everybody does. You'll hear people say, oh, I persist. I do. I have the habit of persistence. And here's my response. No, you don't. Because you're missing part of this. And the part you're missing is without exception. Without exception means that you never don't persist. You never stop. You never stop. Without exception means I persist every single time. It doesn't mean that I persist most of the time. It means every time. You want to be massively successful? Persist without exception. Without exception. All right, what'd you hear? Talk to me, Diane. So going back to your story about Perry, mm. um, the big... Uh